they're being a little shy right now, but in the background you may be able to hear a chorus frog vocalizing. The call has often been described as someone taking a comb and essentially drumming their finger across it. I also sometimes think of it as like a very squeaky screen door. And you can hear one there. There's at least a pair of them talking. So obviously what they're doing is you've got a couple of males that have set up you know, little micro territories and they're trying to attract females for the breeding season. The chorus frogs will start breeding about this time of year. It all depends on the temperature. And then they'll continue for probably another two months. But most people, when they say they've heard frogs, that's probably the most common frog around and definitely the loudest in terms of vocalization. Now, hopefully we'll get to see a few today, but they have a, they have a way of just kind of melting into the background whenever you get close to them. It's very difficult to see, but you can definitely hear them. Uh, they make so much noise you'd think they're a large frog, but in actuality they're only about an inch, inch and a half, you know, from nose to tail. So, but, um, we also have Columbia spied frogs here. We're on the middle Provo River. And Columbia spied frogs will be considerably larger, so up to say, you know, three or four inches from nose to tail, snout bent length. If they extend their legs, that's gonna add like another five inches. Um, but their vocalization is fairly quiet. It almost sounds like someone tapping on a piece of wood or some people have described it uh, as a, a kind of a faint woodpecker type of noise. So a lot of times they'll be in an area and people won't even know it, except for when they may get a glimpse during the breeding season when the males come out and congregate. And then you'll see them kind of frolicking around, doing a little wrestling, that sort of thing. So. Mark, do you have anything to add about the coarse frogs or spotted frogs? One, one thing interesting about the spotted frogs is they, uh, they're communal breeders. So one male will establish a, a, a site to, and he'll start calling to attract females, but unlike most frogs that are a little bit territorial it will attract all the other males that are in the area so you'll have large congregations of spotted frogs in one place. This area is typically one of those sites where you'll get the multiple males and multiple egg masses all clustered together when the frogs reproduce. One thing we always try to impress upon people you know we get asked pretty often aren't why are these species important? Um, and they're a very important part of the ecosystem. I mean, even if you're not a big frog fan, you're probably a fan of something that eats frogs or something a frog eats. For instance, you know, frogs eat a lot of mosquito larvae, things of that nature, provide a good service to us. Um, they provide forage, food source for everything from trout to sandhill cranes. A lot of people enjoy watching sandhills. There's been a recent otter introduction. The otters will eat a lot of frogs. So people just need to remember that the frogs have a lot of value within the ecosystem. They're an important part of what we have here 